Okay, Coffee with Crows. Welcome back. I'm your host, Frank, and my other host, Brad. We are going to be talking about the beginning of the end, life and death scenarios, life and death, apocalyptic shit, all kinds of crazy things. Let's do this. Well, (laughs) the reason that we're... You know, we, we came on the subject is because my mom died last week. So, uh, and really that was like, the, I've, I've had people pass away, but that was really the first person that was close to me pass away. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's different. Um, That's a really hard thing, though, when your parent goes. I mean, I, I think more so, so when you're younger. I, you know, and, and we were all there on the last but day. But it's still really hard. You know, my my father passed away when I was young, and that was really tough on me. I mean, seriously tough on me. That's, you know, life-changing. But well, when your mom passes away, that's... Sorry, I mean to cut you off there. No, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You was, know. I was, we were talking about that, 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 you know, when you're prepared for something, even if it's like a couple days, I think, you know, you just... It's like so much easier, you know, you get to say your goodbyes, you get to have moments, you know, but with situations, you know, with you, it's like, it was so sudden. And I think that's what makes it so much harder. You know, my, uh, my wife, her brother, uh, was, was shot and killed and, you know, it was so sudden and it's like, still, you know, you have, you have things you want to say, you have things that you never got to say. And it's, it's gotta be super hard. Um, you know, but like I said, with my mom, I, we had uh, four and a half years where, I mean, provided the last two years, it's pretty much just, you know, bed rest and she didn't really understand anything anyway. But I think she still knew we were there. You know, at least I like to believe that. Mm-hmm. So, um, but this isn't attempting to be like a sad episode. This is attempting to be a little bit, I think, more funny, if anything, you know, like rituals. I think I think rituals is really something I want to stress on. That I think it's just interesting that, you know, in the United States, somebody passes away and then it's like a week later until you actually get a funeral, you know, and then it could even be a, even be later than that, that you actually get the body over to being buried and all. It's like, yeah, I think it's because people want to like take their time to think about it and, you know, put it and kind of grieve about it. Plus there's, there's a lot of things that, um, I don't know. They have to kind of make sure is right. And, uh, there's just a lot that goes into it now, you know? And the fact is they've got the embalming fluid they put into you. And I've even talked to you about this, that like, I don't know if I even want to go that route. I don't, I don't, think I want my blood drained or I want anything. And you're like, you're going to become like a big, <laughs> you're... I don't know, but like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. And I should have researched it. Cause we were talking about this, but I thought that they like had to like, I guess they don't drain your blood. I don't know. Do they drain? No, your they, blood? they do. They drain the blood and they put uh coolant. What are they? Well, they it's hang uh, you, they hang you there like a meat thing and then let the blood no, go. No, no. <laughs> Because you think no, you no, no. They anything, just, they like just, they a stick. pile of somebody's blood would be like badass, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, forget the ashes of somebody. Like, oh, I carry around this vial of somebody's blood. Like, I think that would be kind of now. Cool. They had that on Dexter. I don't know if you remember that, but the one dude who was the charismatic guy, he had a little vial of blood carried around on his necklace. On his neck. The Trinity Killer. Who was it? That was right after the Trinity Killer. The charismatic guy who would put the bodies into the barrel. And it wasn't him, but he was the one that was like saying, you know, if you want it, take it. You know, he was, that was his whole spiel. And he made oh, money yeah, yeah, yeah. by being the charismatic guy that would, you know, say he had that vial of blood of some of the victims in there. And then Dexter. But anyways, we're getting a little off topic with that. But yeah, he had the he had that. So, well, it's not even quite off topic because, you know. That's another interesting thing you look about how much TV glorifies 
killers now. I mean, Netflix just came out with the and Ted yeah, Bundy. And, and yeah, exactly. I think that's a problem with a lot of uh, modern day uh, killers that we have with, with all that is because they're so glorified with Netflix or they're so glorified with things. And the fact is, if they're forgotten about or people disdain them and they forget about them, then the people that are just as crazy to recommit the same shit that other people have done will take a second glance and go, oh, this isn't so yeah. prestigious. I won't do it. But the fact is people look upon these killers and they glorify them to some degree to the point that it becomes something for these crazy fucking so Somebody who idiots. really, really wants to get famous and or infamous, you know. <laughs> Somebody who really you had to bring to up your name. <laughs> I knew, I knew it was going to come out at well, some I don't point. Even, I don't even know if people know that. You know that is my uh, that is my like in-game name for video mm -hmm. games that I play and stuff like that. Yeah, it's been infamous, infamous BC. You know? mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying though. Like people see that they see this chance, and it's like you know, I, I, I'm I'm just a nobody, but I could become a somebody if I just go to to a school and shoot five people got to make sure you at least shoot more than one though you know because then then it'll just be and it's it's like disgusting but it's disgusting like because because that's that's like the cutoff if it's just a simple murder eh, nobody's gonna but really look at, bat an look eye at how we've become so emotionless with this kind of stuff and it's conditioning we've all been conditioned to some degree like you go in the military they'll condition you to certain things and one of the mottos when i was in the air force which I liked at the time because I thought it was cool and everybody else was on the bandwagon with it. Uh, and they made t-shirts with the words to it was kill, you know, the Air Force kills people and breaks their shit. And it's true. The, when you're in planes and you're shooting things out of the sky, you're dropping bombs, you're killing people and you're breaking their shit. I'm sorry, it's just what the United States Air Force does. When they go out and do sorties, you know, they go out and do missions. It's just, it happens. But the fact is, you legitimize some of this stuff to such a degree that it, it you know, it has an impact. Well, look at, I mean, look at almost every, and, and I mean, anything, you know, from Dragon Ball Z, The Punisher, you know, name, you name it. Fighting is like a, a core value of, of like entertainment is it just a is it just a male aspect of trying to compete because you know we have that animalistic in, uh, instinct or is it just is it just like the way life goes well i don't know do you relate to goku I probably to some degree. I mean, you mentioned P the Punisher. I, I think I relate to Frank Castle probably the most. Well, and it's you know, it, like, it's and, and that's the thing. Like, I played uh, one of my favorite characters from different games was Cyan, Final Fantasy VI. He lost his wife. He lost his child. He lost everything, and he was responsible to maintain all that. He went into a fucking rage and destroyed everything that was. You're trying to attack him against him, like, and then he finally found peace. But still, like, he had the strength to, to carry on, you know. And well, the same I, thing I, for Frank Castle. He lost his family, and he went into a rage and decided to, you know, focus his energy on trying to be the weapon-like force to, you know, push for the future in the right direction. Well, at least early, as far as morals, as far as what his morals shows, were didn't really stress on the villain you know the villain was just bad you didn't even really know the backstory of the villain often you know look at like inspector gadget you don't even see his face you know <laughs> i'm surprised you use inspector gadget but yeah well, he's got I'm the cat saying, with the hand it's it's really all you know yeah and i'm just you know saying, like, the cat with the hand i mean like the look, hand look, on the look cat look i mean look at captain planet you know i mean it's like <laughs> you don't know anything about any of these why are we on Captain Planet? Well, I'm just saying, t you know, cartoons and stuff when we were little, okay. we don't really pay attention to the villains. And yet now that's really changed. You know, I mean, like you want to know more about Vegeta. But then again, Vegeta becomes a good guy, you know. So you well, look questions. at Kingpin and the Punisher. Or not the Punisher, but Daredevil. 
Look at Kingpin. Yeah. There's such a heavy focus on the Kingpin. It's almost like he holds uh, 51% of the story Ooh, over they, Daredevil. They really sometimes. try to make it like this borderline, like, oh, well, is the person who's doing the wrong thing in his world, is it's a good thing, you know? And that's that's what that's what people like nowadays. They're people... trying to legitimize the. It's not just like look at Billy Russo, you know, from The Punisher. You know, he's he's a psycho, but like he he has this story of like. Is he a sociopath and... or a psychopath? Because a, a sociopath is, I think, made, and a psychopath is born. You know what? It's a great question. They're pretty much the same thing, but it's it's one's made and one's born. I'm thinking he's a sociopath because he was kind of put into the situation where he was friends with Castle before, but he got really greedy. And you remember that, how that all went. But, like, it, it really, like, twisted him to the point that you know, Frank had to go and do what he had to do, but he didn't finish the job, which is why the whole second season has, you know, him in there. And I'm, I'm, I haven't finished it yet, so don't tell me anything more. Yeah, but I didn't I'm, finish it yet either. I'm on, like, the last the two episodes, one. you know. I'm probably but, around the same as you, yeah. Well, yeah. It's pretty good. That first episode, that fight scene, I didn't even realize that was in the first episode. But that Dude, fight scene, when he's in the bar, man, that was... Oh, wow. God, was yes, badass. it's awesome. <laughs> I was like, yeah, now I remember why I like The Punisher. (laughs) You know what? I actually really liked that that whole last episode with him, like, pushing his face through the glass. I was like, oh, he just deserves it so much. And, you know, I and it's weird, but, like, I feel for Frank. Well, it's like Bruce. It's not just because we have the same name. It's just, like, I feel for him because I'm like... Oh, he Bruce, just, you know, Bruce Lee, you know, he takes he he always talks about being full of, like water and taking their energy and using it against them. Frank Castle's the exact opposite. Overpower them and then when they're he's like Tank Abbott, you know, like when they're yeah. over, they don't know what to do. Just, <laughs> I mean, you remember when he's in the bathroom, dude, he smashes the person's head on the on the on the one side and then just takes his hand and smashes it in the sink on the other side. I was like, <laughs> Like, I'd probably be out after the first. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, well, not out after this one. Let's try yeah. another tactic here. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was good. I mean, that show's great. Show I mean, great. I really I appreciate it. I like Bruce Lee. And and they had Enter the Dragon on Netflix just uh, a little while ago. So I got to watch it again. I mean, I have it as a DVD, but I'm like, oh, it's on Netflix. I'll just I'll watch it right now. Yeah, you know? that's, that's a funny thing too. Whenever something's, I do that all the time. I have I have DVDs of stuff, and I see it on Netflix, and I'm like, well, I don't have to pop it in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're just like, oh, this is perfect. I just go by, click. By click. the way, what are, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, I already showed you. Well, it's... you didn't show me. You didn't show the audience. Oh, Budweiser. Budweiser and Jim Bean. Beam. I always want to say Jim Bean. I don't know why. Yeah, you do. I'm I'm so used to saying Jim Bean. But it's Jim Beam, and it's huh. like a, it's called Copper Lager. I don't, I don't know. It tastes really good though. It's a very so, good taste. I so like it's it. like a beer infused with whiskey? whiskey. Yes, it's a beer and whiskey. So it's like Miller, a bo- it's Miller like a boiler did. maker in a uh, in a Miller bottle. Miller did this actually with the uh, Fortune, I think it was. I got a bottle of it. I'm not gonna grab it, but I got a bottle. Oh of it. shit! Yeah, you know we're doing this live. I'm probably not supposed to advertise any of this. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, as long as people like it, they might be okay with me sponsoring them. But I'm not supposed to sponsor anybody. I'm not affiliated with any of this. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I can't tell you what brand of tequila I'm drinking? Well, you can, but I, I I think I shouldn't have shown the label, at least. Probably as much as I probably should have done, but... Blur it out. Blur it I out. I can't. I gotta go and edit it somehow. That's and already talk about Jim Bean. Jim Bean. Okay, so it's Jim Bean, not Jim Bean, if I want to screw around and... <laughs> said, I never said Jim Bean. I said Jim Bean. Yeah, I, I did say Bean. Jim Bean, so... Yeah, okay. I'm drinking Hornitos tequila. Horny with, tequila? Uh, didn't I give you some of that? You I'm gave me horny tequila? Bottle. The Hornitos tequila. I don't remember getting eight. horny, though. Hornitos. 
tequila <laughs> aged in whiskey barrels. I think you said something about it. Was it like bright orange? Well, it's it's anejo. It's the gold. Did you call me a bendejo? I did. Yep. Son of a bitch. Me. Um. Anyways, right, so to keep to keep this back on track. Uh yeah, probably. We we talk about you know like I I believe in my wife in Dominican Republic she said that you know they pretty much just I don't I think she said they burn the body maybe maybe they bury it and that's what I've heard before and <laughs> I've heard you you know I've known it's like the next day it's like the very no next but day. I know but like even if you it, you look in the past you look at Viking funerals yeah I I, I always think of the Vikings you know. Stand and stick, you know the king there. the king or the prince or whoever goes on a ship and sometimes the wife goes with them and they shoot a flaming they, arrow burn it down they shoot the arrow, yep. and that's that you know well the japanese you know don't they light all the lanterns and let them go down the water or is that a something else no that's just for you know that's like that that's for well, like a sentimentality thing i think well the, they put well, a lamp on the water and let thing, it float because the mexicans had the day of the dead where it's like it's like our Halloween, but you know, and they believe what they do is they put pictures of their their loved ones. I how many how many movies have you seen where the person dies and he's just sitting there as his friends and family are around him talking about him or her, and you're just saying all you can do is listen. You can't like you can feel it, but you can't express pain. But if your eyes are open, you can see it. But you can hear it. That's what I imagine. I, I think that happens until rigor mortis. And whatever happens to your body, you're just going to go through that pain until you are literally, like, completely brain dead. No matter what. That's that's why I don't want it. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> like, I don't want, uh, you know, to be burned for any reason. Because I, I feel like you might feel that <laughs> at some oh, point. I, like, I'm, I'm all about... Well, my wife wants to be buried. I was going to be cremated, but I kind of now want to be buried because I don't want, you know. You should want to feel that I don't pain. want to be cremated when my wife needs <laughs> buried. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> An urn right next to a grave. I think if you, well, yeah. I think if you were cremated, I'd wait, I'd wait at least three days or so until your brain is totally non-functional. It's just like. Well, that that's what I'm saying with my mom. It's been know. two weeks. I don't exactly know when they burn her when they did the burning i guess but it was it was a little bit i think i don't know but, yeah. you know, no i've only known my uncle to be uh incinerated or not well cremated right, incinerate make it the same thing i guess but <laughs> cremated's like a nice way of saying like they go into a place and they get burned incinerated's like Get the blowtorch out. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe I should word that differently. <laughs> but hey, have you ever seen this way of cooking meat where they have like all the organs in the meat and they they burn the outside of it with the organs in the meat? I guess I have to look up what that's called again. Hmm. But apparently, it's illegal. I don't know. I don't know. That makes me think of the what was it? The Green Inferno. Yeah, makes me think of the Green Inferno. I don't know if you saw that movie. Nope. That. Dante's Inferno? No, The Green Inferno. It's about uh, these people going into the Amazon to save the Amazonians. But they end up trying to save a cannibal sect that ends up killing them and eating them alive. At least half of them do. It's, it's insane. It's, it is hard to stomach. It's hard to watch the whole way through. But you have to like, skip through some parts. And... Yeah. It's like, did you, did you hear about that? There's like an island. I think it's south of like. Yeah, that, it's you, in uh, Africa, I think. It's uh, yeah, and, well, it's and actually the, the northern end of the, Africa, uh, right? The missionary went to go and they basically like pushed him off the island, like got rid of him. And then he went back. Then he got and eaten. And then they killed him. <laughs> <laughs> they just, probably like, got eaten. Of arrows. Well, they had helicopters flying over too, and the helicopters are getting shot at. By yeah. arrows, which isn't going to really do much, but you know, still. you know, I was thinking about that. Like, if life reset, what, what would not exist? Like, what was something that was found very, very like who 
you know what I mean? Like bread, bread, for instance. All right, so you think like beer. Beer is something that probably in every civilization will exist because you leave grains in a, in a jar and they get rainwater in them and you forget about them for a little bit and you, you start to get some kind of beer. You get that mash, you get the carbonation going, you know. And I was just thinking like, but like with bread, bread is a bread, bread. I've been making bread lately. You know, I've been making and bread is a pretty complicated process. Not, not crazy complicated, but that's what makes me wonder. Like, like, uh, are we meant to eat something that's so complex? We have to put so much effort into it versus just having something like a vegetable, a fruit, or, you know, our, the way our teeth are designed is we only have like a few canines, like scavenging. Like sometimes what you mean, are, like, aren't we more supposed to be about the vegetation, the fruits and the meats? Oh, you're one of those more, guys. More than trying to build something that we weren't naturally meant to have. Like, that's what I'm wondering. Like, well, it's like, like marijuana, you know, who, I, I don't, you know, they always say it was 4,000 years ago, but it's like, who was the first person? It to like... had to have happened. There was some random freaking fire, and then somebody smelt it, and was like, "Oh, this one smells it. good." I and then it just happened ate like it and that. They acted strange or something, huh? Like, I figured horses probably ate it and they acted strange. And there were no were... horses in this side of the world. Well, who said marijuana started in this side of the world? Okay, all right, well, you got me there. Well, I mean, I, I'm just saying, like, you know, I was watching, um, I was watching this this guy from Colombia, you know, get, like, his his job is to get cocaine, you know, make cocaine, and he goes out and pulls the coca leaves, and then he puts fertilizer and something else on it, and then he puts like gasoline into a pot and then strains it all out to get the cocaine paste, and I'm thinking, like, man, this is. This is really complicated. Like, who? Like, That's what I'm wondering. Like, are all like, these was, super complex processes just, like, you know, even oh, necessary? Is that is that the reason why? Well, that's what I mean. Co cocaine would have never been illegal if it was just a coca plant. Oh, buy some leaves and chew on some leaves. Have a stimulant. Get some energy. People would have been like, oh, okay, you know, it's just like a leaf. You know, it's like cocaine gum. They they make the extract and you. Well, chew they on used it. to have all that in the like, past. Coca Cola was initially made with cocaine, and right. that's well, one of I mean. the reasons why it, because it was so popular, and they just decided to convert some of the chemicals as a, this well, or what's that. What's caffeine and, made from? Is it is caffeine only found? Caffeine's not only found in. Well, in caffeine's a drug too. I mean, caffeine's not only found in coffee though, is it? Like, where does it? Where does it come from? The caffeine? The cocoa plant? Is that where it comes from? The cocoa plant? I think so. What about like guarana? Like guarana like can we take guarana and turn it into a powdery substance and people can start snorting guarana? Would that You know what I'm saying? Like it just I don't know strange. much about it really, but Yeah, you know, like tobacco makes kind of sense to me. You know, this this plant dried out, people smoked it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess marijuana is the same way, you know, people, but the leaves, you, you can smoke the tobacco leaves, but you don't really smoke the marijuana leaves. You smoke the, the bud flower and it has to be only at a certain time, you know? So it's like, it's just interesting to me, like hmm. how, you know, what are things that, that we exist in our daily lives, you know, like aluminum foil, you know, what are the, you smoke Who's that? Got... No, you don't smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Off the topic of smoking. Oh, we we're talking about bread, right? Not everything is about smoking. No, but like aluminum foil. Like, you know, who was the person who's just like, oh, here's this metal that you can make really, really thin and uh, turn it into something to wrap sandwiches in and bake with, you know, uh, which is very interesting to me. You know, glass making. You know, do you think if you were to visit an alien planet that's just like yours, that they would also have glass? 
because glass is, you know, I guess you take sand and you got to heat it up really, really hot, you know? So, I mean, what do they do? They, they took sand and dumped it into a pot, turned it into a liquid and then smeared it out and realized that it becomes a pretty substance. And is what is glass though? Just quartz? I don't, you know what I mean? It's just interesting how certain things are so much in our daily lives that uh, you kind of think like, wow, this seems like it's extremely rare that this ever even happened. Ask about glass? Well, like, like cotton, you know? Well, glass is sand. Glass is sand that's been... So you think somebody went home, took a bunch of sand and dumped it into their like stone furnace and when it smothered out and then it cooled it became like a shiny substance or something and they were like oh wow this is like now i can try to mold i guess i guess glass could probably be if there was an if there was an maybe you didn't hear me before if there was an alien planet that was exactly like our own what are some things that you think probably wouldn't have existed on this person's planet you know, you, now that you mentioned it, I think glass possibly is one of those things. But I don't know. That's probably extreme because usually dirt and sand kind of exist on practically every planet. So something well, saying, that might I'm not exist, I guess. An identical would, planet to ours. I guess it would probably because most planets would need water to have some kind of life. So I'm guessing it would have to be something. Um, dirt related so maybe like a particular kind of grass you know how like different places have like bluegrass or what There's i would consider regular glass or grass i or... doubt i doubt if we went to another planet that was exactly like ours that we'd have people with like grass front yards of grass i doubt it i mean where did that come from where somebody was just like i want my front yard to be this nice luscious bit of grass slow cut you know, at a nice level, or you can just walk on it, feel the earth. Like grass. What if, is pretty... what if it was like they, you know, most of their places were like a, like a fur rug or like a fur carpet, you know, or like a shag carpet. You know, the type of material was shag-like in its material, but it wasn't like we grass or just grew up. like moss. That's what I'm saying. What if most of Is that what you're asking? That's what I would yeah. think. Like copper cups, you know, I mean like anything, you know, who who was the person who decided, you know, oh, let's make cups made out of copper. Of course, this mm -hmm. is like stainless steel inside, but yeah, copper blinds you. You know, alcohol. What if, like, I could imagine there would be some planet with life on it that would have like a shag like grassy material where the tips sharp and almost metallic in a sense completely different than how our grass grows I mean, who was the first person who distilled alcohol and made like really really strong alcohol i want to i want to make my own distillery hmm yeah you know who was that person who's just like well if you Boil it, but not quite boil it. You got to get it hot, but not quite boiling. Get the steam coming through and then chill that steam. Like who, what do you think before like modern day piping was invented? Did distilleries ever exist? Did the thing is do like, how do people come up with these notions to do these things? Is it somebody who's just bored out of their fucking skull? That's like, I, mean, I want to try this today. Like, I'm not satisfied with the taste well, like, of this alcohol. I need to try this today. You know, Everybody a... has the, oh, in the future, there'll be flying cars. Everybody has that mindset, like flying cars, like the one invention that everybody can think of. Only until everybody head. accepts that, you know, the fact that Tesla was right, Edison stole shit, and, you know, they're like, okay, well, we'll give it to you, but we have to sell it to you. We can't just give you things for free you know <laughs> until that point happens we're not going to have that and you will have to buy 
whoever is going to sell it. You know, that's so, the point. So, that's that's the point that Tesla did never got his ideas out there is because he wanted to give away free energy and the United States was like, fuck that. You know, we gotta make some money off this, and that's the point. That's the point of our so, country. We we have to capitalize and run this pyramid like system where So to bring this back to the whole you know, thing, because you were gonna eventually say pyramid. And and they always <laughs> Well, they always, you know, what, do you believe that? Well, the pyramid well was that was the point of life and death is as far as the pyramids go, it wasn't the pyramid. Like people never got buried in the pyramids. Not yeah, initially. No, that was a point where you have a pyramid and you have some outlets of the pyramids where the king and queen would go to. And spiritually, you'd go there as a spirit when you die and you'd get sent to this particular planet that was aligned with with that outlet to go to that star, whatever that planet was. You could go there, you could reside there, that's where you go when you die. That's what you believe? Because the king, the king's room? Because I agree. Like, if you whole, actually read the, the if you read the tablets of Toth and you read a lot of that shit, you'll understand that there was keys to eternal life because the point is people in the past, they all believed in reincarnation. You would get reincarnated here. Some people thought in some other cultures you'd get reincarnated as animals. If you fucked up bad enough, <laughs> you'd become an animal at some point, but then you'd be eaten. But the point is, you'd be reincarnated here to come back because people believed in karma. And they believe that you just have to come back because you never figured it out as far as how to get out of the system to be a star, to go to the heavens. You know, you wanted to go to the heavens. If you screwed up enough, you just came back here. And so what the pyramids were built for, like you've read the Emerald, like I did an, enough extensive research as far as like what ancients did to believe in. I've seen enough YouTube videos. And yeah, I saw enough of that too, that you would literally go to the stars to a heavenly body and get out of this, what was considered a prison planet. And that's uh, what Ryan that's Bell. what a lot of them believed in. All right. So life and death, could, you know, as far as that goes, um, you could look at the Bible and look at how Jesus said, I am Elijah, if you can believe it. What he's referring to is the fact that if you believe in reincarnation, I am that guy. I came back to show you how to get out of here. That was another part of the Bible, too. Some people will contest me on that and all that. You know, that's okay. But that's one thing he did say. And that's one thing a lot of people in the past. As soon as Christianity came about, people stopped believing in reincarnation. But before that, almost well, all do. cultures believed in reincarnation. So yeah, Reincarnation is pretty interesting. I so mean, a lot of people did believe in it. And it's not a myth. It's a truth. It's a fact. A lot of cultures did, and some still do, you know. But I think the fact is, like, you know, you get things right. You know what you need to do with your life. You make sure you're doing it right, and you don't have to. And, and that's what I think Jesus was saying with condemnation. I think it was reincarnation that he was talking about. But, you know, that's my opinion. So, but, I mean, as far as the pyramids go, yeah, definitely most of the point. And, and another part of the pyramids, too, is it could have been an energy conduit to give off auric energy to create light. I don't know. Like we've talked about this before, Brad. What and if the concept what if the concept of reincarnation existed up until Jesus did come back? That's what I think. That's kind of what I think. I think like what if what if reincarnation no longer exists after Jesus came back and he like put an end to this whole idea, like this is the beginning of the end. Like yeah, There's exactly. No at this point. Exactly. You're, that you're, you've you've had enough time to figure it out, and you're going to come back, or you're not going to come back. Well, I think you'd still do come back because the thing is, like, if you look at science and look at how science agrees with everything, you know, energy can't be dissipated; it can only be uh, converted. I probably said that wrong, but energy can't. You know, it's it's always going to be converted into something new. So, like your soul energy, energy you can know, never be destroyed. It, that yes, that's the right way to say it. It's always going to be converted or turned into something different, and that's the way it is. Like you, 
you eat every day. All the material that you eat, the animal, the plant life, whatever material it is you put in your body, it's get converted. That material gets converted into growing you. And it's just the way things go. It's like everything gets converted into something new, something different. And so when you go, all those memories, all of what you are, your life experience, everything that's good. It... Well, you know, I was actually thinking about this. You remember how I told you before about how I just I, I haven't quite figured out exactly how to put what I want to say, but how I believe that certain foods shouldn't be mixed together and all this and that like the pizza is my always my main example of like I'm not sure that cheese and tomatoes are something that we should be consuming together. I think really, that if we, yeah, and you know, I never talked to you about this. Certain things I just think should not exist in your stomachs together. Like, like if you're eating tomatoes, that's what you should be eating. Like, I don't even believe you should be eating like, like five different foods together. Like, you should never be having lobster, and then also be having like butter and all this kind of stuff. I think that like you have to. It's almost like the same way of like, you know how like they say like when you eat something, you eat the soul of it and you you take on that presence. Remember how I told you about it's that? It's sort like, of the Native American aspect that, and I don't know if it's just a Native American aspect. It, it could be an ancient culture aspect, I suppose. But well, like the other you, thing I think that what's happening, the reason that people are dying sooner and all this is because we're not eating our foods any longer at the pure ripe date. There's basically pre-ripe and post-ripe and then the day of And this is another thing that I've heard that Asian cultures will do a lot of the time is you eat fresh and very fresh. Like as soon as it's cut within the next day or two, but you don't save it and you freeze it and you wait till it's deteriorating. You eat like very, very fresh foods. And and it's usually like if you look at health stores and health foods and things like that they'll that's kind of what they do too they they try to get the freshest things possible and you go there to try to get like what's just been cut what's just been either cut or killed or whatever but it's fresh you well, know it's but like that's but there's like a like borderline that. of how this all exists that's wrong and that's what i'm saying to get something fresh in a supermarket you're actually pulling it you're, you're pulling the apple off of the tree versus having it fall into your hand when it falls into your hand it was the right time to mm-hmm. eat that is when the apple is its pure state it was ready yeah but when you pull the apple off it wasn't quite ready it didn't finish and you know what it makes sense too because i just want to say this and i hope this makes a connection but like if you pick a flower to give to your girlfriend or whatever. You don't want to cut the flower, wait a week, give it to her when it's wilted. You want to give it to her when it's fresh. The smell, the fragrance, everything is there. You wait a while. It it slowly deteriorates. There's the look, the freshness. It's it's kind of gone. uh, Does that make sense? I mean, does that like... I always feel like tomatoes are the easiest It's like everything that, that, that... the essence of that material was is slowly dying and you're not getting the whole part of the process. You know what I'm saying? Like the smell, the look, um, with foods, it's the taste, obviously. Like if you have something that's almost rotten, you know, and I've had pears and I've had other foods that are almost rotten. It's like, well, I'll eat it, but, uh, if something's truly fresh, it's almost the day before it starts to rot. Like, have you ever seen a tomato? You get these tomatoes and you go to the store and they're really, really firm. And you're like, wow, this is like a, it's strong. You know, you could drop it on the floor and it'll just roll. You know, it's not going to splat. Yeah, obviously. But if you eat that, if you eat that tomato, you're always like, eh, it was too tough. You ever seen those tomatoes that are like, they're ready to go. You know, they're soft inside. They're Mm -hmm. soft. If you drop it, it, it's going to splat. I guess the point is like you don't want to eat living material. Right, you want it to, right. you want it to be to like, okay, I'm on the, I'm on the way out, now it's okay, but you're like, if it's too far gone, it's fly material, 
You if don't eat that. If it's too far gone, the only reason it doesn't taste good is because other things have already started consuming it. Yes, not you, you know, other things. Not but, you, okay. other, other bacteria. Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm saying. We are eating too much food nowadays that's not fresh. It's post right. And that's it, why we're that's why I think off, we're pulling bananas off trees and then oh they'll be ready to eat in a couple days in the supermarket but they weren't because they 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 didn't come naturally and they didn't you know they need to be ready on the tree and then you take them off. They can't be green on the tree and then turn Well that that's why that's why I think the best fruits on trees are the ones where the stem is easy you could just twist a little exactly. bit and bam exactly. it just pops and off it and it's like right okay off. i'm ready to give you I'm the ready. fruit i was gonna fall off in the next day you caught me a day before that, that's why that there's a lot of talking. times when i when i've had bananas in the past and they were too fresh they were mean they're green they're too fresh sometimes i was okay with it but most of the time i wasn't just, right they it, make you it's sick just, if you if you yeah it's just it's banana, like okay this sick. is almost living material at this point this is not it's not ready not right you know, it it's like your body is like, ugh, don't no, I don't want that. I think we do this with a lot of foods. Mm-hmm. I think we do this with like almost everything. And I think that when you go to a super, like not a supermarket, because if you don't cook at home and you eat out, other other places, that's how they do it. You know, when I used to work at like some restaurants, you'd have the ripe, strong tomatoes that you'd be slicing up to be putting on you know, sandwiches and stuff. And maybe after a day or two, they would be nice and soft in there and you could throw them on. They would be good. But in reality, when you were slicing them up originally, some people you're giving really firm to me. And I just think that it's like, no, you're going to get that person sick. They're going to have indigestion down the line because this food isn't quite ready for them. You know, lettuce is another one like onions. You know, and this makes sense because this stuff is still growing it doesn't know it's dead yet. So right. it's still trying to grow. And while it's trying to grow, that's the reason why people will say, like, don't eat uh, potatoes that you kept in the fridge that are starting to sprout or something. Right. Like, don't eat the growth of that. Apparently, it's not healthy for you. Like, I've done that a few times. I've never really felt anything adverse or anything like that. But I think it's, you know, fairly possible. Things are still thinking it's growing, but once it's starting to decay, it's like, okay, now I'm decaying. Now I should probably be converted back into something that could grow, you know? Right. I just think that, that, that plants have a very, very specific life cycle and mm-hmm. we don't really respect it. And I think that if you, because that's what I mean, that's why we're dying. We're not eating the living. Like we're like we're well, we are eating the living. That's what I mean. We're eating too much of this. I living think the fact stuff. is there there is there is life in between and death, and we're right. supposed to try to find the the good happy medium in between, close to the life part. And I think that's why a lot of other cultures that eat very very fresh foods, and that's why a lot of people advocate that is because that's the best kind of food you can have to keep your body revitalized, looking its best. You know. And well, I, it's like I the, think it's possibly good, true. The good know? bacteria is strong. And, you know, when something's ready to go, the good bacteria immediately gets onto it and starts breaking it down. And you want to eat that. You want to eat that good bacteria. You want, oh, well, that's that's, that's of, why, dude, that's that's why. There's... It's like pasteurizing milk. Unpasteurized milk is so good for you because you're having, you know, these good bacteria. And when you pasteurize it, yeah, you're killing the bad bacteria. But now you're killing the good bacteria. And in essence... You're just drinking fattening water. Pretty much, yeah. Dude, even if I made something as simple as like, you know, a meat sandwich, you know, something. Like, I can't have old meat. It just, it starts to get drippy, you know. It starts to coagulate within itself. And if I have old cheese, it starts to get coagulated in a sense. And if I put spinach on there, because I love spinach. It's not just the Popeye thing. You know, I love spinach. If I put spinach on there that's old, it starts to leak. Like the chemicals from with it leak because it's like it's it's about to just go. Horrible. Like you have to have it almost perfectly fresh, but within like a day afterwards if it's been cut. You know? And I think at least a day afterwards, like the material's like, okay, you know, I'm going, but I'm within the, the beginning process. It's like the ripe time. That's a that's the reason why you always pick ripe fruit. It's ripe. 
you know, you don't want to have it overripe. You know, there's another. You mentioned another thing that I wonder if it would be on another planet. Cheese. Cheese has been around for so long. You have to have cows or some animal to make cheese, man. But I'm saying you like, have cheese. to have breasts of some kind to create cheese. They, they've discovered cheese, <laughs> you, and so it goes. <laughs> that would be an interesting experiment if you could turn a woman's breast, like a human woman, make her breast milk into cheese and feed that to your kid. <laughs> you can. Oh. Like, if you have any kind of milk, you can that. turn it into oh, cheese. Oh, you know, I I turn my breast milk into some cheese, and then you my, have my, goat's my milk is cheese. You have cow's milk is cheese. How many? How far can we go with this? Well, I'm just saying, like, could you feed your my first my baby's first solid was breast milk cheese. <laughs> you, know, like, you collect enough of the milk, and you do what you need to do to turn it into cheese, and it's cheese. Well, but yeah, but cheese has been around for like four thousand years almost, or something. It, it, like they've discovered cheese you know for a really long time and that's interesting too like I, I thought cheese was a pretty good process to do because mm -hmm. it has to be cultured right to make cheese you have to have certain enzymes in it I think you have to leave it out I don't remember the whole process you have to do for it it's been a while but I think you just leave it out in a bucket well maybe that's just yogurt and that I'm thinking it hardens it's been so long since I've but I'm pretty sure you have to leave it out. Well, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's... You leave out blue cheese more, enough, it's basically than, mold growing on it. There's more than just leaving out some heavy cream or some milk. I mean, there's so many different types of cheese, you know? I think you leave it in a house that has... It's cool in a house, and I think that's... I don't know what's... You know, I, I really don't know. But, you know, you know at least cheese, I think I do, but I, it's been such a long time. A certain type of worm actually eats a cheese and then pops it back out. Are you talking and about the, Swiss cheese? No, the silkworm. The Swiss cheese is caused from air bubbles. That's not okay. Possible. Okay. No, there's, there's this, they put silkworms in this. I, I can't say I know enough to be not, super knowledgeable about it, but yeah, yeah. They, they put, well, I'm telling you, they put silkworms. I think it is in this block of cheese and the silkworms eat it and digest it and then poop it back out or whatever they do. I guess it's not poop it, but you know, mm -hmm. and apparently it's like this really, really soft, delicious cheese. I'd be willing to try it. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, if, when people eat something and they don't die, I don't <laughs> mind going, I don't mind being the second one to try it. <laughs> I don't want to be the first person to try like the cat coffee. That's the first thing you thought. If someone was willing to try it and they don't die, I'll do well, it too. Have you ever heard of the, that coffee, the Kopi <laughs> Luwak? so basic. You ever, you ever heard of that coffee? I think it's called Kopi Luwak. What? They, I, th I wish I remember exactly where it was. I don't think it's Indonesia. It's, it's like in the Himalayas or something. There's a specific type of – it's not even a cat technically. Uh, but it's a t it's close You're to. You're saying a cat. a cat makes a cheese? No, the cat actually eats the coffee beans. It ferments in their stomach. They poop them out. This this, this time they do poop. They poop. Oh, look it up, Kopi Luwak. They poop out the coffee beans. Then the people pick out the beans, wash them off, and make their coffee with that. Oh I've my tried God. it. That I've is a lot of it. fucking work, dude. <laughs> It to is, get a it, coffee bean or like well, it's the most expensive hold on. coffee there is i could either be playing i believe it's six hundred dollars an ounce i could be playing battlefield right now or i could be playing ace combat but you know what i actually want to pick out coffee beans out of this cat shit and put it in my cup and grind it down and then drink it they do, they do. <laughs> and it's the most expensive kind of coffee in the world. Well, because it's such a pain in the ass to make. <laughs> Literally, the cats, you should see these these cats. They're not actually... Look, they're are not they actually the size of dogs? Right? What what the hell are they? No, it's, it's a specific type of breed where the because the bean can ferment in their stomach. Or else they're just making shit up and they're just like, I'm just going to pick out shit out of those cats. You know, dumb. Well, that's and... what I'm saying. 
You see, and in if, another it, planet, if it ate a coffee planet, bean, sure, I'll put it in the grinder and just tell people. In another people, planet, I don't think Kobe Luwak coffee would exist. I think that we you know, are. The I, I actually know the there are, dude. I know there are certain artists that will just literally paint whatever the fuck they want. They don't care, and be like, "I'm gonna sell for a thousand dollars because someone's gonna buy it because they think it's worth something because I said it's a thousand dollars." And people will buy it because they're like. Holy cow, this guy really thinks... Did you really see that thinks... painting that shredded itself? What? Did you see the painting that shredded itself? A painting? There was a guy who made this painting, and he said, don't ever put this up for auction. Well, they did. They put it up for auction, right? And it was, you know, selling. And as soon as the gavel hit down, the, the guy clicks a button in the audience. <laughs> and he had a built-in shredder in the frame. And the painting starts going through the shredder. <laughs> you got to look up the video. You see these people. I right? got to see this. Well, the, sh the here's the funny part. Halfway through the painting, the shredder malfunctioned. And now half the painting is in the frame and the other half has paper dangling underneath it. Right? You want to know what happened? The painting tripled in value. What the fuck is wrong with people? <laughs> It's triple the, the value. Point, dude, the point of art is it's to show off something you can't explain. Or you could explain, but everybody's got a different impression of it. So when it comes to art, you can screw up as much as you want and say, hey, this is definitely worth you know worth your investment. Even though you're bullshitting their ass off. I mean, and it works. It works. Look at look at some of the modern art with like the big red dot and then nothing else, or just like a big like you look at uh, look at Netflix. The Fisk was obsessed with this painting that was just white. It was just random, slight different colorations of white. It was a lighter white, a darker white, a light. It was like what the fuck is wrong with this guy? It's just a stupid <laughs> white painting, which looks like my. It looks like my wall <laughs> with particle board chips sprayed on. I don't know. With it's, a color. It's crazy. There's nothing interesting about this thing at all. There's nothing interesting. It's crazy. But yet, because, like, it is you, so you damn Picasso, important to him. And you you look at Picasso and people are like, oh, a child could draw that. No, they couldn't. No, but Picasso was talented with the way he wanted Picasso, to portray himself. Picasso, I'm just saying, like, you look at some of this modern art and it's crap. And people will pay a big dime for it, but there's nothing to it. Like, I could do this in a heartbeat. I've already done oils. I've already done painting before. I can do the same shit that they've done. The point is, like, you have to make it expressive and make it look really cool and convince people it's worth something to, you know. But but what about that, too? Like, you look at, like, I, I've done some art. And some are pretty decent, and I've had some people like, well, it would definitely sell when you're dead. I'm like, well, well, that's fucking great. I can't make any money off of it, but somebody else comes in, you know, looks at my and goes, oh, hey, I can sell that because this guy was really good, but he didn't know it. <laughs> and they try to make a buck off you because you're dead. I mean, look at how, you know, death works. People try to... It's like to try to scavenge off of your works in life. Well, that's you know? like Sublime. The, you know? The, the band Sublime. When you go, they people had are like, going to try to scavenge off of you. Like, they had like four albums. Like Termites or something. Sublime had like four albums that was like, they're all pretty decent. I, I, like, I like Sublime. And then he makes one album and it has like the best songs on it. The most memorable songs that people remember. And then he overdoses on heroin. And then all of a sudden, everything starts selling. <laughs> yes! That's exactly right. Because somebody's like, this guy's dead. He didn't know how to market his stuff as well as I can. Yeah, he was so I'm going to sell it. His car. That, was, that was where he went wrong. But dude, that's what happens. I mean, look, that's what we're even talking about is life and death here. This is, you know. On topic for once. Wow. The beginning of the end. This is the beginning of the end. When you go, man, whoever knew a little bit about you is like, they didn't capitalize why you, on why this. Do, why do you think I'm, I'm going to sell it? I'm going to make some money. You know, because that's a point. Like, everything converts into something else. 
That's all materials. Gonna I'm gonna make these videos, and then all of a sudden, when I pass away, someone's then, gonna make a big uh, vine we'll about everything like, that you did, and turn it into their shit. And well, sell I was it. <laughs> so I was talking about that the other day with my wife. Actually, I was telling her because I was actually thinking about the topic, and mm -hmm. I was like, you know, you think about it throughout history, and who we learn. You know, first off, we got what like maybe you can counter with. We have what around seven billion people on our planet that we know that about. Was eight, but okay, okay, eight. Maybe it's eight. You know, in history, I, I don't class, keep track of this. I just remember hearing things in history class. And let's take all the history classes in every country for every famous person. You hear about maybe what a hundred thousand people. Let's just you know. 100,000 people are remembered that you hear their names of, of people in the past. Now, we have 8 billion people currently. And 20, you know, 100 years ago, it would have been like a completely different 8 billion people because it's not like a stagnant number. People are dying, people are living, people are dying, people are living. So the idea that there's like this one number, like there's just literally trillions and trillions and trillions of people who have existed. And Absolutely. throughout time. Especially with wars. So yeah, many people yeah, exactly. died in wars that there were definitely hundreds of trillions of people that have survived or that have lived. That have lived. And you think, like like I said, I, I mean, I'm just throwing a number, but like 100,000, maybe even 200,000, maybe even 500,000 people's names remembered that have, like, it's like, like less than point zero one percent of people who have lived are people who are remembered yeah and it's like it's daunting on you like to think like chances are like oh yeah you know like like the mexican idea of the day of the dead people will remember you for a little bit they'll keep that picture but it's like you know with my mom passing away you know my wife is like oh who's in this picture i don't know I, maybe no, and, and I, I totally get you because I, I looked up uh, yeah, some no. more ancient history of my family and I found, you know, I found this other person who was probably a cousin of my grandpa and I looked through his photograph stuff and I'm like, wow, this looks like my uncle. And it was like a great, great uncle of some kind. But he looks exactly like my uncle, you know, and I found out he's within my family branch. But when you look at Day of the Dead and you look at stuff like this and even when my, you know, father passed away when I was a kid, you know, I've had people like, oh, go and honor him and stuff. And I'm like, he's gone. I mean, that's, I know. That, that's well, not like, him. It's like, it's like you're, you're taking care of the remains. That's why they call it the remains. But you always feel like this person has left and they're not in this reality anymore. They're, they're not here. And it, maybe they're slightly here to see how things end for what the what has happened, but they move into a different reality. I really do believe that. I don't believe like I'm not an atheist. I don't believe that you know blackness and there's nothingness, and then you become primordial soup and then turn into some, like I think everything that you, you know you you've you've created within yourself ha will convert into something new, you know, as something else. Like you go to heaven, you go to become something more. I'm just you know? saying, like I asked, you know, I asked my wife. I said, you know, you remember your grandmother, and she said, yeah. You know, when I was little, I, I, you know, I spent time with her and this and that. Like, of course, I remember. I said, what about your great grandmother? You know, her, her mom. And she said, well, she would always tell me that that she was like a really, really beautiful woman. And she said, actually, we went back to my grandmother's village one time, and apparently it was true. Like, everybody was like, oh, yeah, your great-grandmother, she was a really beautiful woman. So it was like this, like, okay, I guess that's the one thing that will be remembered of her, that she was very, very attractive. She's very, very beautiful. And I'm thinking, like, they spend their entire life on this planet being known for so many different things or becoming so many different things. But down the line people are just forgotten you know i could you know, like but but you think about people like confucius how long long ago did confucius exist and yet his words are still spoken you know 
Gandhi. I mean, Gandhi's not pr entirely that old. Yeah, anymore. but you look at some of the oh. other different cultures like that, and I, I, I don't know if it's totally true, but I saw this other children's show. I, I don't know if it's called Los Mortis or what it was called, but the people of the past for some of the Mexican uh, culture. Well, it was a Mexican cartoon, and if you were remembered longer you didn't have a second death you know in your death you got to live longer because people remembered you you did something good but in your second death you're dematerialized and broken down in material and you talk about that movie i don't remember what it was called i think it was named the, after the, the gram movie, the movie on netflix no well maybe it was on netflix but i actually I think I did get to take my daughter to see it, but um, it was it was a boy's name, right? It was the boy's name. I think so, but it was. And he had the guitar. He had, about he had the, the, the guitar, guitar. Yes. And he played all the the, the, the origami Marachi, things. The, uh, the marachi or the. We, old... We made the origami things dance and all that. Yeah, that was a cool movie. I wish I could remember the name. It was a pretty cool movie, but like. And he goes into the dead, the world of the dead, and they're like, yes. he has to like reunite, and he thinks the one guy is his dad, but he realizes that guy was just a phony. And, and then they switched around that he got the, his real dad to have the fame for what he deserved. The other guy got to experience the second death a lot sooner than his initial fight. Like, yeah, I remember that one. But, like, I don't... And, and it seems interesting. It sounds like it could be possible, but I don't think there is a second death i don't like i don't believe that you know i think you you find the heaven you find the hell that you've wanted to have the way you live life is the way you live death i think so you it's don't believe in purgatory basically no i think you can go through purgatory like if you lived a middle ground you know and you've had a lot of pain that you've inflicted you'll have to feel that too that movie where purgatory was like well a that's the reason well that's the reason why a lot of you know eastern cultures will talk about karma because like what you've reaped on earth you'll have to you know have the same repercussions when you go the same thing with purgatory from a christianity level i mean you just look at different cultures and you'll see there's a lot of similarities with them all around the world oh yeah you know it's there's no like ultimate like oh this is completely different no it's just different wording look, look at the norse you know exactly you to, die, to die in battle in order to you had to do it, something spectacular in order to go to like if you're a warrior you went to valhalla because you did something spectacular but, and and realistically you think the the muslims kind of believe that too because they would you know kamikaze themselves in order to if you if you die in the name of Allah, yeah, but they put you know. they they strung up a lot of extra things to it that didn't make a whole lot of sense. So, um, well, it's a great battle technique. I mean, you know, in you, some if, ways, you, if you convince people that that are you know look at the Klingons. <laughs> <laughs> some of the noblest people in the world. Are we going yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> But you know they. We're gonna talk about the Romulans and shit now. They is die that... in Well, the Romulans are. You know, that's a whole different story. I'm talking about the Klingons. You know, they okay, die. The in Klingons battle. dying in battle. Yeah, all right. I mean, they are like the noblest of people. And yet... I'd say the Romulans are a little more noble. Maybe even Data, because he was like completely unemotional from the whole thing. Actually, it was a. The side... Romulans are more noble than the Klingons. Yeah. Okay, maybe some of the Klingons, but you know, Klingons like Worf. I mean, that guy was Klingons like, like a saint. were basically the Norse outer space type characters in a, in a sense, but they were way more violent, I would say. Just way more violent. But I don't even yeah, know why the, the fuck we're talking about this because it's not even reality. <laughs> a lot of them is always plotting behind people's backs and stuff. They're trying to get things right. To their own sense, but yeah, that's like saying Q's the most noble person. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So we all agree that the humans are the most noble race. 
Like yeah, because because when you look at here's the thing, you even look at other cultures and well, like the way they portray Star Wars or Star Trek, Romulans are way too what is it aristocratic in a sense. Yeah, in a and with their, with their trials like guilty. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the Klingons are like very native, like fight for right. You know, uh, the might might is right. As far as that goes, like Norse, like, but sense. they, but they, they're, they're very, they're, they're very basic though. caveman and Romulans are very like up there aristocratic, you know, yeah, but, and then but humans are like right horrible. in the middle. And that's what it even shows with like star Wars too. Like right in, but we want balance. We want balance. I know it's true. You we know? do want balance. Even, even the United States government, we, we really have this. That's why we have this big 50, 50, this democracy. Yeah, that's why balance. we have this big difference between like, it's either Republican or Democrat. Cause we want to like, sometimes we, we go too far this way and we just shoot back that way. I think in reality, we probably want to just go straight in the middle, but you know, you've got all the political hype, either one for the other, because the fact is, Conquer and divide always works. It always works. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody can argue me on that. It's just like we can point out so many examples. I think it's divide and conquer, though. It's crazy. Oh, okay. Well, (laughs) divide and conquer. All right. That's fine. That works, too. Well, I'm just saying. I, I. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, I'm drinking some tequila, you're drinking some beers, but you think you have to divide first and then conquer versus conquering first and then dividing. Yeah, but if you're if you're playing certain games, like you're playing pool, you have to imagine the shot you're going to put in, and then you do it, and while you're imagining it, it works just like that. So you can't you hope for it. It never works for me. You have to visualize it and then do it, and it works. I'm trying to help you, Brad. That's all I'm trying to do. So let's talk a little bit about the post-apocalyptic. First off, I mean, it's nice to know that we have... The, oh, did you did you check out the, the um, Netflix Kingdom? No, I didn't get to watch that yet, no. I, watch I've it. been watch focusing on, on Punisher, and I was going to watch that tonight. And you're like, hey, let's do the show. Okay, we'll do the show. I didn't get to finish it. But, oh, but watch Kingdom. Okay. I'm telling you. I wasn't sure I was going to watch it. I, I didn't know it was going to be any good. Dude, they – all right. Th- I wish there was a little bit more martial arts in it because it, it's it's a South Korean boot movie. So I wish there was a little bit more martial arts in it because it's so much Asian people. Is it Asian. better to listen to it in English or in Korean? Oh, you can listen to it in English. I mean, it obviously there's a little bit, but I think it's fine. It's pretty good. But – I was unaware what the premise of the movie or what the TV show was about. It's zombies. I, didn't I was even thinking it, it was about zombies. Wait, and is it medieval time zombies? It's medieval Asian zombies. Oh, they should have just called it that instead of kingdom. <laughs> medieval Asian zombies. Then I would have just been all over that. I, I mean, love the medieval period. I like Asian stuff and I like zombies. So I mean, it's just basically like the the um the somebody turned the king into a zombie there's this flower there's this flower that exists that brings you back from the dead but when i guess these people all you know zombies because of it they're not and the guy he's like he's like i have to find out what happened to my father so he's like traveling in the meantime these, this group of people are, are using the king's name, saying that, you know, he's being arrested and this and that. But nobody's seen the king. They don't know that he's actually a zombie. They're just listening to, like, <laughs> his second in command, you know, saying, like, oh, the king says this and the king says that. So, like, he's – they're, like, trying to get him, but he keeps stopping – it's cool. You can tell. I mean, the second season is going to be, dude. This has like Walking Dead potential. Like, no lie. The first season is so simple. Now you're not even into the Walking Dead, though. So no, I'm really not. Because why, why know, are walk, you okay? So why are you not into the Walking Dead 
versus being into this? Is it because medieval period, or is it because of drama, more or less? Well, remind you, I like The Walking Dead a lot until season three. Season three? Where are they? Once... I didn't once, care for the season two so much because it got so slow, and it was all about the barn and the farm. Right. And season three was like, okay, we're getting away from the farm stuff because there's really nothing going on there. As far as I remember, season three Besides was the, the zombie cow, I didn't... The prison. What? Season three, season three was when they met the governor. Oh, that was when they... Well, yeah, when they go into prison, it gets really dark, and it's kind of like... They're living in a prison because right. it's so safe. So here's the things I didn't like. First off, I didn't like the fact that there was there seems to be constantly like other survivors. Like I guess this would happen in real life, but it well, seems obviously, to be like, yeah. To me, it seems like, and I'm and I'm dead serious about this. To me, it seems like if you have a prison, and you definitely have this prison. And it's holding its ground well. There'd be no reason to not take on these other people. I mean, you'd want a group. You want to start, you know, there'd be no reason to, like, have this battle and all this and that. When you find other people, you need workers. Like, we need people to be tilling that ground, getting farms going. We need to be, you need workers. So, like, this whole battle of you have a zombie apocalypse and you're also trying to battle some other people. I was like, this isn't going to happen in real life. <laughs> like, no. Then they killed off. What's but if, name? but if the, if the governor was that much of a hard ass, we just wanted that much control. I mean, he literally shot everybody and it was, um, well, oh, and I, what was her name? She decided to like hide within the bodies that I don't want to see her die, but I already know how, the comic book goes, and it's so gruesome that I decided to stop watching it. So I'm like, and I agree with you on that. And that's what I don't know. It just, it just comes down to the fact that people are so greedy. Still, to the point that they feel like they can overcome the zombie stuff. That they're just gonna go full out and attack whoever just to take control. And it was a power control between the governor and Rick. And it wasn't so much like Rick would be like, okay, you know, we'll work with you and we'll do this and that. Like Hilltop eventually became that sort of proverbial like, bitch for the, the saviors. Was that out of line. It just you know? seemed like it was so like political. Like it was like this political battle. And I'm thinking well, yeah, like, yeah, it's a territorial you a, thing. You guys have a zombie apocalypse. Like, what are you talking about? Political politics. Like, well, yeah, it became it became a territorial thing. The governor wanted to have control of that too, because his name is the governor. You know, he's <laughs> you get a I title and it goes to your head. You know, you want to maintain that level of control. That's and all. All I'm saying is, I just thought that it got a little bit too far fetched. You're you're saying it because it was too soon. You know, maybe. With the zombie yeah. thing. Like, initially, people would be trying to work with each other. That was too soon. I, I do understand, but also then again, I, I don't fully understand. Cause I don't live on the East Coast, so I don't know how East Coasters all live like. Because when I've known them, really fast talkers really like to get things done. Uh, different from people in the Midwest. I just think that there was a real... All right, first off... Maybe it's a cultural thing, but off, I just thought, like, okay, I guess that probably would happen, but... Today I'm at the grocery store, right, and it's cold out, and I'm ready to put my car... I put all the groceries in, and I'm ready to put my cart away, and some other guy's like... And I do this for other people, too, but some other guy's like, hey, I'll take that cart, because he's he knows. It's cold out. Get in your car, you yeah. know? I'll take it, you know... I'll take it. And I do this for all, all, like I, anybody I see, if I see them just about, even if they're like like two bags in, I'll just wait. And I'll be like, look, I'll take your card and I'll put it back. He was going in at the time, so it was a little bit easier for him. But you, you try to be helpful. Basically, when crap hits the fan, like 9-11, patriotism kicks in. 
people stop acting so high and mighty and they start looking at the bigger picture. It happens all the time. When crisis occurs, people stop thinking so much about themselves or this plan and they start thinking about a much more unity idea of life. I'm saying that, that I the think idea what, of, of I think what, what the was guy... going on, when, we can't fathom a, a, a real zombie apocalypse because it's not happening. But I think that if a real zombie apocalypse did happen, we would definitely find ourselves like if somebody's alive and they're not bit, like we need them. We need them. We need to figure out, you know, we need to hear people's ideas. We need to figure out a way to, to, you know, have defenses. We need people to be able to fortify. First off, I don't even think a zombie apocalypse would ever truly happen. I think you could have an outbreak, but I think it would be contained. I think that you'd eventually start getting military involved, and I don't think the military would lose. I think that if, even if you had fast zombies, I think that realistically, I could see area. it. Like I could see it literally gutting out about half the population, but not the entire population. I, exactly. Because at I, some point, people would get very serious about it and be like, "This shit is not going to happen anymore." You know, because with well, enough loss of life, zombie, dead. once you kill it, they're dead, and it's, it's possible to kill them. But yeah, I'm just saying people would figure out how to stop it. They would figure out how to contain things, how to make sure that it can't keep happening. It would never happen completely the way the movies portray it. Even if it was something like a rabies thing with like Nation Z, you know, where people are just insane and just ravaging, you know, just running like, you know, they're they're technically dead, but they, they can run, you know, a quarter mile a minute you know, and or faster than that, and no problems whatsoever. I I think, you know, with something like that, it would only possibly kill half the population because people would be taking that virus on planes, going to other places. You know, you touch the person on the plane, you touch whatever on the plane, however the airborne, whatever it is, you got half the population dead all over the world. But people would start to come together and be like, hey. We have to work together on this, change I mean, things. There, there are fortified places unless you start seeing that zombies can either A, pile on top of each other to get over cliffs or, you know, I mean, it, it's weird to think about, but I mean, rural areas, I don't know. I'm just saying, I think that, like it's true. Like a prison's a very, very good aspect on could they get into a prison? I mean, I think so, because I mean, the fact is most prisons are designed for people to not want to go. And you look at that double razor wire, that's a, that's not going to stop somebody with a zombie virus. They're just going to cut themselves until they get over that thing. And it's well, just meant to cut. It's not meant to slice completely through. You know, it's not I meant mean, for that. And if they push into the, the fence, after a while, that fence will just lean Okay, and I if it leans into another fence. fence, they could just crawl over it. And if the other fence breaks, then they'll just walk over it. It's not going to completely contain them, you know, because enough. Because the fact is, with enough weight pushing up against a fence, which has practically no weight at all, it's going to bend and lean the metal to the point that they can crawl over it, or bend well, enough that they'll walk over it. One that that there was just so many piling on top of each other that they actually just like climbed over it because yeah that was what were, the nation z movie i think it was nation z yeah but they had like this huge cement wall it was ridiculously high and it was within tel aviv i think and that's not even possible because they wouldn't have figured out to just let these other creatures die to climb over it that's where it started looking ridiculous it's like it would just literally have to be like a pile of bodies that eventually started to slowly pile up no random order, no purposeful movement. Like, these people are not working within an organized state to well, figure this stuff out. Nathan Z had the intelligent one, right? It was way over intelligent, but they were rapid. 
but I mean, they actually you had can't have rabid and over intelligent at the same time. That doesn't with, work. With the uh, the black guy who actually picked up a gun and started using the gun, even. Yeah, I'm just saying, like the way that that worked. I don't think a lot of people appreciated the movie because it didn't make a whole lot of sense. So, like, so here's the premise. If, in if this you were point. out of your mind, insane, and running and ravaging and being a rabbit dog, you wouldn't also be that intelligent to create a body pile high enough to climb over it to get into a place. Well, that's the other thing, too. Remember, they can run, but once you break out their legs, they're not running. Yeah. I mean, they physically can't run, you know? Yeah. So I'm saying, like... I'm just saying, there were certain discrepancies within a movie that just didn't... Well, what I'm it, saying It didn't even look like, remotely accurate. What I'm saying is just, in general, like, a simple bat... Yeah, you can get bombarded by zombies and lose, and I fully get that principle. But, like, you smash somebody in the kneecaps, they're not... They're not getting back up and walking. I mean, their bones are shattered. They're literally going to crunch down on it, and it's just – it's they won't – physically, they won't be able to walk. Yeah. So, I mean, I get it, the idea of like, oh, how much your flesh is destroyed, it won't matter. But they still run on bones. Okay. One thing I wanted to talk about with this, the beginning of the end, is – all the people that have talked about all these doomsday scenarios where, you know, they let everybody believe this is the end. I, I literally feel like all these people doing this are complete charlatans because there is no end. <laughs> there is no, I don't feel like there is an end to this. Like they'll say like, well, the sun's going to burn out at a certain point in time. Have you taken a probe and stuck a probe up? you know, probe up the sun's ass to find out, or has the probe melted? I mean, you don't know. Good put a you, probe you don't... the sun's mouth. You didn't have to go up the sun's ass. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, like, people just... don't know. They they have all these assumptions, and they're like, this scientist knows because he stuck a probe up the sun's ass or in the sun's mouth. No, he has not. Under the He's never fine. physically been there. He's he's checking on robotic scales of values well, that's, and that's like he um, doesn't know he Bill, doesn't know Bill Nye you know Bill Nye and he, he and he's not really, even a science guy he got really he's, offended he's a mechanical about, engineer he got he's really got, offended about uh you know well the, he should because he doesn't have any serious validation as far as his Tucker own Tucker on Tucker on Fox is really laying into him he's like what actual proof do you have that this is even like caused by us he's like he's a mechanical he's like, not... engineer that's what he's got his degree in i i, I he's not even tucker a on. science guy he I just likes the on. idea it's just a it's just a tag it's a tag he's got a tag i do agree that you can give fox yourself a nickname and run with it and people will love it you know fracking burning fossil fuels and then the amount of methane from these animals from cattle that we keep producing that's what they say is the biggest thing. They don't even talk about it, but they say that all the methane that the cows produce. Guess what? If it's lighter than air and goes up, it might evaporate into the outer atmosphere. Might but, not even um, stay here. I mean. But the thing was, it, it's like the guy, you know, what Tucker kept trying to say was, well, how do you know that it, I mean, it was going to happen regardless. Like, you know, he's like, oh, we're, you know, we should be like the 1700s, but we're so much hotter than this. Well, and look that. at how many animals fart and crap. If we didn't kill them, how many more would fart and crap? Well, we're, <laughs> we're farming tons more. Okay, I'm just joking. I'm just saying, like this. I mean, if we didn't kill them, we're... If, if we weren't around to kill all the animals, that would be <laughs> farting and crapping. How much more methane would there be in the world? Um, <laughs> if you put some alliteration in that, that would be a great tongue twister. <laughs> I don't know how to say that anymore. Any more polite? <laughs> I don't, I don't... Methane. At one meter per 
I don't know how to do it anymore. Play <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, like, like, look at what happened in the past in Wisconsin. We we shot most of the wolves, you know, to the point of almost extinction. And then as soon as, like, within a year or two, boom, immediate, like, deer overgrowth. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately, well, everywhere. Pennsylvania is even the same way. Dude, it was I like it was immediately, the and they're like, like "Okay, let's you know, let's pull back from here for a second, and you know, we let them grow." And the wolves went like that, you know. The boom, there was a huge population overgrowth of them. And then they there was another one that's happened. Listen to this. This is currently happening. I'm getting a little, a little buzz now. I got the hiccups. The sea lions, sea lions eat sea urchins if I understand this right. And the sea urchins Supposedly. eat coral reefs and, coral. and the coral reefs. Well, we used to hunt the sea lions back in the 50s. Coral! And we, al- we almost made them extinct. So without any predators, the sea urchins, they have a few predators, but they, they just massively taken over. And mm-hmm. now they're eating all the coral reefs. And we have big problems that they're eating like way too much of the coral reef. And this was like something that we did fifty plus years, seventy years ago. Like, yeah, it's like things have we tampered you know, with the natural aspect of life and fucked it up. There's yeah. so many times we've done this, you know. But like, even with cows, like you're you're looking at it just like, oh, it's the methane gas from the cows. Sure, we're breeding them more so we can eat them. If we maybe ate more of different animals or vegetation, we could stave some of those effects. But still, you know, I don't know. I like I I I think it's just like (laughs) indoor indoor like oxygen. We're gonna be we're gonna be Doctor Seuss soon, where they're selling us water. Are you saying we're gonna be Sim City and we're gonna be living in a eco ecosystem within a bubble? Just a, hey, that's how they did it in Cowboy Bebop on Ganymede and Mars. Remember those? They fly yeah. Into those, like, no, but they shot out oxygen. You know, they converted uh, the air into oxygen around the outside of the bubble, so that everything with so slightly outside and everything within it was within a ring, or a you know a gaseous air uh, of oxygen. Well, well, you know, we and you saw grow. that they would be shooting out oxygen on the outside edge, so it it would displace on the outside, but within the inside, it would be confined to the point that it was just this big dome-like area of oxygen. That it's like created an ozone. Yeah, you're creating like remember um, Total Recall. Remember that movie Total yeah. Recall? The aliens yeah. created that thing, you know, to create oxygen on the outside. All you do is put your hand there Arnold Schwarzenegger dig and yeah that movie was so great until the you know? very end when their eyes were sucking out and then all of a sudden they all went back into normal and I'm thinking like no no your face would be horribly disfigured at this point because just a moment ago well yeah your eyes were I mean like, your, oh. your eyes would still be out of your head you'd be like Aah. you'd be looking like some freaky not Halloween character paper. yeah I know but he's just so strong that can't affect him you know, we know that, right? He's just too that powerful. Movie, I, that movie is like, I still don't, I've watched that movie like 10 times. I even one time watched like three times in a row to see if I could really understand. And I still don't understand if it's just a dream or if like. No, I, it's about like, like people have done this before. They've, people have made so many films trying to talk about the actual existence of aliens which I don't believe is aliens. I believe it's just, you know, twelve thousand years ago, our our settlers different years human, ago, they left the planet. different I human that DNA. The pyramids were made twelve thousand years, well, over twelve thousand years ago, before our first ice age. I believe the pyramids were there. I th- I'm gonna say close to twenty to twenty five thousand, but yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on that. They were definitely yeah, older. That's almost saying that they were two, two generations ago. 25,000 years. Every 12,600 years, we experience a cataclysmic event or or v- close to it. We well, actually- if you look at if you look at Socrates, 
and he was appreciated by a lot of people. Aristotle, uh, Socrates, Plato, all these people, they talked about Herodotus and a lot of other ancient people, and they believe every almost everything they say except for some historical facts because they're like, oh, I can't... If they, everything else they said was true, why would they come up with some fucking lie just to mess with people? Why would they do that? It makes no which, sense. Which one are you referring to? Herodotus, Socrates. I mean, they've talked about this guy named Solon. And this guy named Solon said every so many thousands of years, there is an apocalypse. There's been apocalypse of earth, apocalypse of fire, apocalypse of air, apocalypse of water. I well, mean, the we last go, one was water. Yeah, and that's what's uh, in the Bible is the flood, and many other cultures talk about the flood. And there is descriptions, there is evidence of flooding. But I think the fact is, like, we've been, we've been flooding for a long time. I mean, we've had so many ice glaciers melt to the point that there is flooding because the ice is melted. I mean, look at the Great Lakes. All that used to be big, giant fucking ice cubes. Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Erie, uh, the Hudson. I mean, all, all the Great Lakes in the United States were I'm because of you, gigantic ice years, cubes. Every six years, we go through an opposite effect. So we're, we're in the we're in the effect of the cold this time around, and next year is going to be even colder. And it's a bitter and then, snap. I mean, it's my, then, dude. It's been nine, minus twenty five degrees here. Minus twenty five degrees. It's not that cold here. I've been to other states. It's been colder than that. You know, it's supposed to be like a minus windshield of minus 51. That was think, what was think, today. Think it's insane. That. Do you remember the blizzard of 94? Kind of. Think about that. Think about the time period. 20, 2000. Or no, whatever. actually, no. I was in a different state at the time, but it was or just 96. cold. Maybe even colder. 96. It was 96. Yeah. I don't remember. But I'm saying like every every 12 years... It's a cycle of, of heat to heat. So that means every, other, every alternating the six years is a cycle of cold to cold. Next year will be colder, and then it will start to mellow out. And then I can't believe years, you're saying next year is going to be colder because minus 25, I, I don't know how you're supposed to get colder than that. It won't, it won't, you won't notice it much colder. It will just basically feel like the same thing. Because we've had some years in the past – that have been cold, like zero degrees for a month and a half or a month and a quarter. Well, it's getting worse. There's no doubt about it that it's getting worse. It's getting hot six years ago or five years ago at this point. It was extremely hot everywhere. Mm. It was hot, hot, hot. And we didn't really notice it. I mean, like, I mean, we know we started noticing it now, but I'm saying like when we were kids, we didn't notice it because it's like exponentially getting worse. I'm telling yeah, you, it's like the past couple of years has been a lot. It's been really warm. I mean, not really warm, but like not snowing much, not very cold. Been getting cool into the summer months. Right. Right. Well, that's but that's like I mean. no that's serious snow, no serious snowfall. Like maybe like eight days out of the year, that you'd actually have to be careful driving. Other than that, pretty mild. But like as far as like, we're in the like, age of the snow now. But dude, look at how many people talk about end of days scenarios happening all the time, and. They make such a huge big deal out of it, and nothing ever happens well, half the time. I mean, it's just like a huge propaganda scam. Everybody's like, oh, this is the end of the world. I Y2K know it because I put these numbers together, and I know they're true. And you're like, yeah, fuck you. You know, Within six months, you're going to be proven wrong. You're going to be a fraud. Nobody stupid. cares about you. And yeah, I know. I, I still mean, think the Mayan calendar, the 2012 Mayan calendar, that repeats the cycles every 4,000 years or so, right? I still think that one's interesting because there was a lot. But they knew exactly how to work the harvest because you look at how the Old Testament would talk about, oh, was it Joseph? 
He talked well, about well, every seven years there was going to be a bumper crop, and every seven years was, there was going to be, or I don't know how, what the time scale was, but after that there was going to be a famine. So they wanted to store the crops. Like he figured it out. I don't know if he had help from the Mayan calendar or what, but the Mayans, they knew how the fertilization cycle would go with crops. The thing is, I think where the Mayans went wrong was they didn't factor in a lot of things. I think they had a great understanding on time, but they missed a lot of factors. One, what our emissions that we're putting out, you know? I mean, that's something that they couldn't have predicted. <laughs> they never you had know? vehicles at the time because the fact is, like, you're, you're, you're putting in cow emissions with vehicle emissions, not just cars, planes. planes. Well, I don't think they put any emissions into their calculations, too. Because it didn't matter. You, because you we, we don't have... Because the fact is, like, you look at you look at the planes that fly overhead and you'll see these trails of gaseous stuff coming out of it, and it gets wider and wider, and then the whole entire sky goes... Like, I've watched this over time. It's true. It does happen. And... When you look at vehicles, and people complain about vehicle emissions, that's the reason why we have cat converters. We have catalytic converters in our vehicles to take away the, the poisonous uh, gas that comes out of it that we send back up into the clouds. Because the fact is, like, people are like, oh, air is just air. No, you breathe air. The fact is, almost all day long, the most important thing you're putting in your body is air. You think it's water. Well, then, most of the I damn read, day, you're I you're. One step this is what the, this is what keeps you alive. This is what goes in your nose, goes in your lungs. It's air. I read. Then it's that, water. Like, Seventy percent. Then of it's food. Comes from the tundra line. That's. I'm just like, trying to tell you that the most important thing is air, and if what we got in the sky in the sky is these clouds, these emission clouds from planes, cars, cows. You know, just this gaseous state that's not normal. It's going to screw us up. One way or another, it's going to screw us up. You know? Like, apparently, like, above, at the North Pole, that there's, like, this layer of trees. It's just miles and miles and miles of trees that circle around the entire... I don't think it's just the North Pole. I think it's, like, partly Greenland and all that, like, in Canada. But... They say that's like 70% of our actual oxygen. Like, we've cut down. And that's that's another factor. I don't think that they factored in how many trees have been cut down. If you know, we regrow that, them. That change. I mean, everything. And it's been like you know? algae that we've, you know, mostly I think it's algae that gives us most of the oxygen. In yeah, the we can create we can create oxygen through algae farms. I've seen this. Mm-hmm. being done and I've oftentimes thought that this will probably end up being the future that they'll have like these long rides in planets that are just filled with algae because the algae can grow up so long dude that's how we could actually populate a planet we get it to grow enough algae we don't have to like produce like what was in Cabo Bebop like those jets of oxygen coming around the sides we just have like a big lake or water or moat around us to have enough algae that creates enough oxygen and bam you yeah, got you'd it have to, well, I mean remember that water contains the O2 anyway so I mean you have to it has it, it's a very very difficult well problem. as long as you don't have enough ducks in the lake you'll be fine they'll eat it all <laughs> they eat algae like crazy um But, yeah, I mean, I just think that the, the the Mayans could have just been off by a couple of years. No, they were 100% accurate. The thing is, the reason why they were accurate is because they put the numbers together, they understood it, and they r- realized what was going to happen. Well, they I mean, knew- all it takes is one, on the other side of our universe, what if one planet collided with, you know, a moon or a, a comet? smashed into a, a star that knocked well, that's, that out that's of the reason why 
that's the reason why I think that um, people in the past, they talked about the Golden Age. It's because I think Saturn was a sun for us. And at some point, something happened. And there's like um, rocks that line around it. Sort of like a, it kind of looks like a prison planet because it's got a ring around it. You know, it's bound. Something smashed into it and now is no longer a sun. So I think what happened in the past is something... We had another sun that would give us more light. You know, we had a different kind of vegetation growth because we had more light. And something happened and now we just have one sun. We have one main sun. Interesting. And people would talk about in the past the golden age. And it kind of makes that sense. Like pretty far out, though. You sure of Saturn? You mean Saturn or you mean Jupiter? Saturn. No, I'm not talking about Jupiter. Jupiter was supposed to be, like, the main god. And I think a lot of people talked about gods, like, what we would imagine, like, superhumans. But really, in fact, it was just... It was a familial sense of this planet being, like, the first. Or we can relate to it this way. Yeah, or that way in a familial sense. But Rhea, in reality, it was just like we're talking about planets. It's always weird to me that Jupiter's not like way bigger. Jupiter, I think it was either Jupiter or Uranus were supposed to be like one of the original godlike. I think it's Jupiter, though. Well, I mean, Jupiter probably was like Jupiter. A, as far as I understand, Jupiter's like a ball of gas. But Jupiter's like way, way bigger than Earth. And you think you think that if it's also not that far away from Earth, I mean, like it's far, but I mean, like, but that's that's what I'm trying to say is that Mercury, if you have a star, and the reason why we float around the sun is because the sun gives off energy. You know, I mean, it's so it ca so the sun so the sun captures the planets that aren't giving off energy and puts them within position. Now, what would it be like if we had Saturn giving off energy and the sun giving off energy and we're kind of like rotating between the two or around the two? Well, I'm just saying it's my you know, boggling what how, like, Typically, it would be between the two because, you know, Mars and Venus would be in between us. But if we had an extra sun, like what you see in Trigon, you know, you have two two suns for one planet so there's always two different types of light that might create a different kind of orbit because why are we rotating around the sun it has a certain magnetic gravitational pull to us because it's giving off energy but it's also pulling us towards it you know it's keeping us chained to it That's we what need I'm saying. Isn't you know that we need that like energy. When you look at Jupiter, and Jupiter's just this time. It's it's like you look up in the sky, and everything's like the same size. All the stars just give a flicker of light. You can see a few stars are a little bit bigger than other stars, but for the most part, it's like nothing's like you don't. You see the moon. The moon's huge. You know. But you did see you see that harvest moon we had? That blood moon harvest moon the past I week. Love, I love, I didn't see it this week, but dude, I, I, it was like. Like I'm looking at this, it it's insanely huge. It's like wow, I can see almost every detail of it. Though the fact is, I think as far as our atmosphere goes, with air and water, there are certain times of the year there's so much condensation that the condensation creates a mirroring effect that we can see it so much closer. And I yeah. think this is what yeah, I think there's more to it than just because it does look so much closer sometimes. You know, because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. You know, it's like, why is it so big now versus then? I think it's just a mirroring effect of water because we look at glass. We use glass to, you know, mag you know magnify to see out there. But you which... know what I'm saying? Like, is and it's crazy how, like, the sun's here and, you know, I mean, things are so far away, but they still revolve around that sun. That sun is so dense, but yet we're not flying off our planet. To go like I guess we're so light that we no, can. No, but the sun is the, the sun is giving off um, energy, which 
if you look at what magnetism is, it's a continuous loop of energy. And I think it's being, the magnetism is being fed by something that is like solar. You know, it's just constantly giving energy to something and it can help, you know, make a loop, create a loop. So like when Saturn was a sun at one point until it exploded or something hit it, I don't know what the hell happened. But they talked about a golden age and there was a lot of people way, way, way back in the time with it who kind of relate to it that way. We had a different kind of planet back then versus now. We have one less sun now than we did before. You know, that's why they talk about things like, yeah, maybe that's you why know, the pyramids don't work anymore. Satan going to hell, you know, Satan being in a hell, Saturn and Satan. It's the same pretty much concept it's a, it's a bit of a stretch but <laughs> no it's it. actually not a big of a stretch it's actually very much you know a part of what we understand you know but i don't know i could go a lot further into it and now probably not <laughs> might not be the best time but like dude if there had to be an end like a Ragnarok, you know, like the Vikings would talk about, and a lot of other countries will still continue with that. Like, you watch so many YouTube videos, and the reason why they're so cool to watch is because the sensationalism of that. I don't think we're anywhere near it. Like, I, I feel like I'd have to be, like, in my 80s or older than that or dead. <laughs> to, like, we'd have to be, like, almost 200 years in the future to actually see anything remotely close to an end of the, you know... Ragnarok, or like like Futurama, yeah. When he goes yeah, to that space, exactly. Thing, the whole planet gets destroyed, and then comes back, and then gets destroyed, and it comes back. Like exactly. Like I, I don't think we're gonna see that anytime soon. Like people will get you on all kinds of crazy ideas. Well, it's the same idea as being remembered. It's the same idea as everything. People love. People love this. That they love for their time period, for their existence to have meaning. That's what we all kind of strive for. We all want meaning. We all want purpose. We all want more than just, oh, I'm here and I'm going to pass and not be remembered and nothing I say will be remembered. And it's just, um, I don't, I don't remember what the, you know, I don't think that I'll ever be remembered. You know, I think that, you know, when I pay, because nowadays with all this technology and stuff, it's a lot different to think about that, you know, I mean, is, is YouTube going to be like, eventually just be like, you know what? These videos have zero views or two views. I'm deleting it. Like how long will they choose to save everybody's useless content? You know, I still go on, on my old Ustream account and it still has all my old views, like all my old um, videos and stuff like that. And I'm thinking like, man, these people have saved my content for a pretty long time now, you know, eight plus years. You know, I went on my Zanga the other day. I don't know if you have a Zanga or you ever heard of it. One of the original like blogging online. And it still has all my old Zanga stuff. Still has everything I wrote, every log that I wrote. And I'm thinking, like, how long are these people going to keep their servers alive just to hold my information? You know, I mean, they don't have to. They're not obligated to keep my information. I use their service to type it in. Who? I'm like, all right, like Zanga. You ever heard of Zanga? X A N G A. It was one of the original like blogging things online. Probably hmm. not even original, but it was before MySpace, before Facebook. They had a thing called Zanga, and you could just write in your journals. It's like an online journal. I almost you think I it. remember that, but I wasn't really. And I wasn't really could, an online person at that time. This was probably in like 2006 that I did this. And it's all still there. 
it, I mean, their servers have kept my information since 2006. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, if Zanga goes out of business, if the company goes out of business, my stuff will get deleted. Like, they're not going to hold my stuff. My stuff won't be on their page. It's on their servers. Now, if you look into the Wayback Machine, you can actually see old archived files of things. Like, I've done this before. On uh, sites that are no longer there, they're defunct. But you can look through all the... Like, so much shit I can look through, it's insane. Um, I don't know if Zenga would do that. I don't know if they have some kind of uh, like contract affiliation they can do it but i think there are certain ways you know i don't know well i'm just yeah i guess it's like you know i mean like in in let's see in 1998 i used to be in like chat rooms on aol and i would type stuff in you think some of the stuff that i've said on these chats they're gone i mean there's no way to ever see what unless you really unless bad. you look up way back machine, then you can maybe find some. But like I like even uh, the Brigadine website that I'm currently hosting, the old one was gone, turned into something else, which never ended up becoming what somebody imagined it to be. And so I went fuck it, you know. I'm making the uh, <laughs> I'm I'm bringing this shit back so people can actually enjoy it. And uh, yeah. It's working pretty good so far, but like you can go back to the Wayback Machine to find the old records of it, but you can never really interact with it anymore. It's just archived stuff. Archived where though? On what? On the Wayback Machine. You look up Wayback Machine. It's archived there. So they they so Wayback Machine is a, is another program that just it's like another the- browser that just keeps all the information on a. A server it has, somewhere. It has, I don't know. Right, it has to be on somebody's server. The information. Yeah, it's on a server somewhere. I don't know where the hell it is, but like, if it's there, you know, then it's there. But if it's not there, you well, you're screwed. And like, whatever you wrote, it's gone. But I mean, it's just interesting to think about. Like, most of the things now, if you can get it on the Wayback Machine. It's always there. It'll always permanently be there. You know, all the wars we did and uh, GoldenEye, <laughs> Brad, probably recorded on the Wayback Machine somewhere. So <laughs> we can go back and look at all the stupid shit we said. What set. do you mean all the wars? You mean the stuff we recorded wars-wise? Yeah, from we, yeah. But we recorded everything on YouTube, you mean? No, all the forum stuff that we talked about. There somewhere. I don't know. It's just interesting to think about, like the stuff that me and Rob argued about. It's like people have an obsession with past, but at the same time, they don't really care about the past and stuff like that. Yeah, but in the end, nobody really cares because it's not important anymore. I mean, you can go back and look in the past and see what people have said. It's not so important. It's just the fact that if you wanted to see it you might have an opportunity well, to go back and look. I fear that that's the whole problem, is that the most insightful people in the world or, you know, the... the they just stick with that. The most insightful people in the world, they're not really getting remembered anymore. If, you're don't, if you don't get popular, if you don't get known, you just get forgotten. And even still, like, do you think people like Ninja or PewDiePie in 50 years will be remembered? Well, PewDiePie being like a history book as the person who, yeah, you know, had the most views, and yeah, that's, he will. I agree because the point is the point is whoever became but, but successful at something, the the problem is, is that most people don't regard certain kinds of games as influential or as important as other types of games. If it's a sport that everybody can compete with, then people really recognize it because of its physical skill. But if it's okay, something I, that I only certain people can compete with because it's digital or because it's different, 
then only a quarter of the people will recognize it or the only the most popular people will be recognized because I agree that PewDiePie will probably be remembered in some kind of book as like the guy who broke the record on views. But you have to also think that T series is also right there neck and neck with him on the lot. And of you know what in the as far like as that, the, like, I, I'm not gonna disagree with you a whole part or a whole amount because as far as the future is going and people in the future are going to look back on this, you and me, and they're going to go, Oh, you were right or you're wrong. But from our point now people, of well, us people, looking into the people, past, people in the future will never even see this. No, of nobody, course they will. Nobody... <laughs> of course they will. I'm just saying from us looking to the past, they'll be playing this in like school. from, you know, from our present current time, it's just, it's not that important. But from people in the future looking at the past, you can be like, I've got something I, I, that I can look at an archive, and these guys talked about this and that, and they were dead fucking on when they were talking about it. And it's going to be brought back up, you know? And that's the way things go. It's The point is, what happened in the past isn't so important. It's what you're doing now that people in the future are going to go and look back into the past and go, this is what happened. This is what these people talked about. And this is the reason why this wasn't important to them at that time, but this is the reason why this is important to us at our time. So what we're doing is actually creating stuff for the future. What happened in the past doesn't matter anymore, man. It's just like what what we're creating with the future. I mean, you look at what you know PewDiePie is gonna do for his future. People are gonna look past, you know, look in the past and go, "Wow, this guy was a, a pioneer within this particular business, you know, within YouTube and other venues as but well." I mean, you think, like all right, like people like Six Nine. You know who Six Nine is? It's a rapper. No, I. I'm not. I'm not huge into rap. Really, so right. I don't That's know. That's fine. Six nine is a rap dude. In a couple of years, this guy went from poor to rich. That's fine. I'm just I'm jail. I'm a rock connoisseur. I, that's mostly me. But what I'm trying to say is like, well, he, you know, he's probably got like a million people plus easily that follow him and all this. But will he be remembered? I mean, bottom line, that's if what I'm he, trying to say. If he had, if he creates enough. Uh, hype or if he has a cult following like like the game that I play that I do a lot of Brigandine it's a cult classic it's a strategy it's a cult classic a lot of people love it you know and it could it just comes down to the fact that there's different monsters they're not overly complex very relatable the story is a amalgamation a blend of different cultures uh, Roman, Norse, Greek. I mean, it, it just has so much to the game that it's so enjoyable. It's just like if you watch something like The Army of Darkness or you watch The Evil Dead. There's cult classic movies out there that some people really gravitate towards and they're really interested in. You know, the same goes for games. And people are going to be really interested in that side, you know, type of stuff. So if this guy becomes a cult classic, and I don't mean like you're making a cult out of it, it's just it's just a way of saying it. Uh, then yeah, there's going to be a certain niche group of people that are always going to be like, hey, you gotta check this person out because it's cool. You know, anybody else affiliated with it that have done anything to keep it alive. They're going to be immortalized. Well, See? I don't know. Just, it's just all weird to think about. You know, you think you got Julius Caesar and Brutus and Octavius and Mark Antony. And maybe there's a few more people I can't remember. But, like, there's lots of people in the Senate. Do they, do they have records of every person who was on that Senate committee back in the day? <laughs> But yet now with it was the players, that's why that word is so popular still. The people that played the game, Julius, now, Mark Anthony, with, the people at the top that decided that they were going to create the world 
but like like here's the thing look at the united states look at look at trump nobody recognized the congress nobody recognizes all the other powerful people that actually are doing most of the work for the government take that back trump is the main head character just because he's there yeah, I've rewatched the video with Trump. He's the main Wait, guy. Wait, Nobody ever, cares about anybody else. It's just the, Trump. You ever seen the video of Trump? When I'm just trying that? to make a point here. Exactly what you're saying. I'm trying to help you see the you way the, the world goes. the video of Trump, though, when he's it's the when face. He's coming it's out the of his face hotel. that makes, you know, makes or breaks the bank. It's, what do you say? You, you ever seen the video of Trump? This is way before he was ever president when he's coming out the hotel. And he's like, he's like, where's my car? They're like, it's just a few more minutes. He's like, I don't have time for that. And he like sees this woman. He's like, you, I'll take your car. And she's like, she's like, but that's my car. He goes, here's a, here's some cash. And he's like, he's like, are those your kids? And they're in the back seat. And he's like, she's like, yeah. He goes, he goes, I'll have time for them to get out. Or she's like, come on, kids, let's go. He goes, I don't have time for that. I'll buy your kids. And she's like, she's like, you can't just buy my kids. He's like, I'll write you a check. And she looks at it, she's like, bye, kids. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, you got to show me this. I don't believe this. Look it up. Look, look it up. This has got to be find. a publicity stunt that's not even real. No, this is way before Trump ever ran for president. It's, this can't be real. There's got to be publicity stunt. He's like, I can't believe this. I mean, I like, could his, believe his, it. His but kid I, goes, yeah, the kid goes, I really who don't. are you? He goes, who am I? What are you I'm your daddy. Rock? <laughs> I'm the Trumpster. I'm the greatest. Like, right? Who are you? I'm your dad. I'm your new daddy. That sounds kind of fucked up. I don't think that's even the, the, the girl goes. I'm scared. He goes. He goes. Here's a wad of cash. He goes. He goes. Don't worry. You're fine. And he goes. And they're like the reporters. Like Trump just paid that woman, that little girl, to not have human emotions. <laughs> <laughs> You got to see the clip. It's it's an old like okay, I don't okay. even know I'll have what to it's... see that, but I don't I don't remember that at all. It was so like I've never seen I don't it. even think it had a purpose. It was it was just like Trump. That's yeah. all made up. That's not real. There's no way that any of that's real. You'll we're have gonna, to send me the link to it. I gotta watch that. <laughs> it shouldn't even be hard to find. As soon as we're done the show, I'll 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 type it in YouTube. We'll find it. Okay. Bottom line, I want to be remembered as being if infamous. Not, yes, I know. I don't want to be famous. <laughs> As before, I I made that phrase up <laughs> when I was fifteen years old. Fifteen years old, I I said that to my friend. I said, I don't ever want to be famous. I said, there's too much work with being famous. You got to be too many things. I said, I'll just stick to being infamous. And it stuck. People like, infamous? Never stop calling me that. You watch the three amigos too much. Well, El Wapo. It's a, it's a lot easier to be infamous. Than <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it definitely is. But then everybody just thinks you're an arrogant asshole that enjoys being an arrogant asshole. If you got it, you got to fun it. Got to live it. And I how, actually, how many, I sort of agree with that people, in a how sense. How many crazy people do you think actually weren't crazy? They just wanted fame and they decided, you know what? I did the deed. I'm just going to keep acting crazy. Mm-hmm. Look, look at that woman. Remember, remember they, they did a whole series on well, her. Well, I mean, I mean, look at all famous people everywhere. You ever remember that woman who tied that the pizza bomber or whatever that tied the bomb on the guy from the pizza? He tied a bomb bank? onto the pizza guy. Yeah. Blew him up. Yeah. And it was like a distraction while they robbed the bank. Yeah, I don't remember this. Oh my gosh, the woman was crazy. Hmm. So like her death, she said she didn't do it. I didn't do anything. She's crazy. Oh, She's like Bill Clinton? Crazy. No, no, like. <laughs> I've had people argue this with me. They're like, Bill Clinton didn't do anything sexual. 
Well, are, admitted are, you, sexual. are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> of course he did. Oh, my God. Yeah, some people will lie their ass off. But. I mean, look at him. You can just. I, I hate to admit it when you when you, you can say because people hate stereotyping and all that but there's a difference between racial stereotyping and just like stereotyping people when you look at them you're like well that person's really lazy or vice versa that guy's a pedo you know you like you you can look at people and like you get creeped out by certain people and stuff like that well yeah some people actually sort of give their tells as far as what they are pretty immediately just like you. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. You need to can you, can you tell what I'm doing right now? I was gonna say you you're probably looking to see if you need to shave here. I was gonna say you probably do need to shave a little bit there. So what? Trim that down. My you this, yeah, you got a little bit a little bit more there. I was trying to be like Adam Carolla. <laughs> I was going to say, you probably need to shave a little bit. <laughs> you don't have the unibrow going on. If you had the unibrow, you know, girl or guy, I don't think anybody should have a unibrow. Anytime you have this here, you shave that shit off. That's that's not right. <laughs> so, end of day scenario... Shave off your unibrow, and uh, you're good to go. The end of days aren't coming. Bottom line, the end of days aren't coming. Better keep living your life. Stop using it as an excuse to act like an asshole. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was wanting to say the whole time. I do. Like, <laughs> if you keep does. thinking like, oh, I could just be an ass because, you know. Do whatever I want. It's, you know. The world's going to end. You've seen some of those videos. Like, which kind of end of days video do you think is most accurate? Now, I almost think this one was most accurate. And I don't remember the name of it. But the solar flares are coming to the point that it was going to melt the earth, you know. And some people decided to go full hedonistic. Some people decided to go with one person and just go off somewhere to die. And eventually the sun just became so big that, you know, the ocean started to boil and people just kind of melted and entire earth turned into flames. People and would melt before the oceans ever even boiled. Well, I'm just saying, like, the way they showed it with seven, the movie is just like... It was like seven degrees hotter. Like, everything. I don't know. I think yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I'm just saying, the way the movie worked, I was like, people just went... Nuts, you know. We got our we got our zombie apocalypse plan. Remember, I've, I, we've talked about it. Do you really think a zombie thing would be the apocalypse? Because, well, like, you never know. All it takes is one infamous person. <laughs> You're gonna be the first one. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll be the first one. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, in, 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 infamosity and intelligence is a bad combination. If you're yep. stupid and, and, and want to be infamous, you're probably just going to bring a a gun to school or something. That's a, that's a stupid people. And they're not even glorified anymore, you know? People you know, you remember the, the, the whole Batman shooting and some of the other shootings where the crazy fucking people that would just go into theaters and just have... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Machine guns and assault rifles. I, I, you think that we're going to get to the point that this is like a daily occurrence? We just have be, complete no, batshit crazy crime. people. Because the fact is, like, a lot of people would probably want to go to a therapist or something, but half of them are like 200 bucks an hour. Nobody can fucking afford that. But people people want originality in their deaths on the news. People, people and get yeah, bored. and that's a what I'm saying. Shooting, like, we shouldn't. Like for the, be, people but, are bored of it. It won't Dude. even air. It's not even news anymore. Dude, from the very beginning, people, like we've been talking about this, people have wanted to feel like they're immortalized in some way. And we watch all, like Netflix is filled with shows of death. Like 
so many horror shows, it's nuts. Besides some comedy skits like uh, Dale but, and Tucker take on, you know, versus evil or, well, the Army Darkness is there or something like just something comedic. I mean, we watch so much of this stuff that people are so heavily influenced that. But people get bored of things so fast. I mean, remember, you remember Spontaneous Combustion? At one point in time, that was like a fairly popular thing that people would suddenly start burning from the inside out. And they would die. That's something that that modern science will disagree on. And then, and then for a while, that, that crop is circles, that's crop just crop internal really combustion popular. because crop you have different chemicals and stuff like that. What are causing these crop circles? And then all of a sudden, that like nobody cares anymore. Like, it, like news, news is. I mean, the best way to describe it is Anchorman. You know, when the guy's like, "What's that on the TV?" and he's like, "He's like, that's just a, a high speed chase." He's like, "A high speed chase." <laughs> He's like, well, who who's chasing? He's like, well, I don't know. And he's like, just put that on TV and let's start videoing that, you know. And they're like, they're talking to like the Israeli prime minister and this and, that, <laughs> and there's less views because there's a high speed chase going on. Turns out it's just an old man who was confused. You know? <laughs> and that's like the, the bottom line is, I mean, that's exactly that's the, the way to point, describe it. Dude. Rating don't... ratings <laughs> control everything. Because you know, it, when it comes down to something like you want to see something fun or something that's realistic but probably boring. And it's not like wrong to want to see something fun. But the simple fact is more people are going to gravitate toward what something is fun, you know, than the realistic. Yeah. And it's just the way things go. That's the way they that that's the reason why that when I watch news, anything that's super popular or super like in tune with what people think is popular or controlled by government scales or people in the know, it just seems like it's going to be manipulated to some degree. Because you Absolutely. look at you look at these independent um, journalists that are trying to get the shit right, they're going to go deep into the darkest crevices of the world to find the truth because they don't have a choice anymore. They have to. Otherwise, they're just sound, otherwise they're just parroting what the higher companies are doing, and that doesn't do them any good. That doesn't help them succeed. They have to find the real truth, you know, in life, To get shit it's right, a windy, it's a windy road to find that truth. Exactly, you it's a windy fucking road. There's no, like, it's, it's pretty. Si- here. So, well, it's yeah, here. well, that's just, is here. They're well, over here. Well, yeah, exactly. That's the reason. That's why the the higher corporations they can go straight to what they feel is right without actually having to take any, you know, real courses to find out the actual truth. They're just like, well, I've always been right, so I'm just gonna stay on his path, never deviate, even though I might be wrong. The amount of dirt you have to dig up to find out the truth is insane, especially when it comes to something of higher politics. And you know it's true. Like, if you really want to find everything about something... You have to hit every thing imaginable. Yeah. And when you look at news, whether it's Fox or CNN, it's all sensationalistic. There's no truth behind it. There's no reporter saying, I'm the guy, I'm the girl that found this and found that, and I can say it's true. No, it's just, oh, this person's doing this because... He feels this way and he feels that way. Feelings can be bullshit. You have to have actual truth and facts, you know, to prove you're right or you're wrong. That's the way it goes. You know? I gotta be honest, man. I'm getting pretty tired. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you. Yeah. I gotta wake, I gotta wake up pretty early. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what else to say, really. We kind of went all over the place here, but... 
think um any ideas for the next topics i have an idea but it's kind of your turn to pick i can oh say really for, yeah okay um well you know we trying to do at the beginning of the end we're trying to do apocalyptic scenarios and stuff i think we covered a lot but could definitely do more i think um how about we do life? We just did death. Let's do life. Well, you kind of sub. You kind of made my category like a sub off of that because I was talking about dreams. You want to do dreams? Well, I mean, life is life is the generalization. I mean, you can part of living is having dreams. And even dogs dream. You know, you ever see them? Those. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen that plenty of times. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we'll do life and dreams next time, I guess. Go ahead and do that. Okay. Yeah. I gotta wake up early tomorrow. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, cool beans. Okay. So, uh, what you do to close out? Okay. All right. Cool. So, yeah. Take thanks. it away, Frank. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Brad. Uh, I guess we will finish it up today. Uh, so, yeah. You want to watch the Coffee with the Crows? Come by in, I guess, we usually do this every couple of weeks. So, every couple of weeks, either it's going to be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, something like that. Uh, we'll just come on here and we'll have a little chat. We'll talk about everything possibly related to it <laughs> to no end. And so, yeah, next time will be Life and Dreams. That we'll have to get in the Cowboy Bebop discussion next time. So. We have our differences on that show. But... Yeah, we do. Yeah. We'll have to explore it, though, so we'll get there. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the show. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. If you do, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And let us know what you think about the end of days. Hmm. <laughs> and the next show topic, too. That'd be not, cool. Not, not our personal end of days, just in general. No, yeah, don't tell us about what's going to happen to us. You know. You'll see. I mean, I know I'm immortal. I don't know about Brad, but. <laughs> I'll be on that, uh, whatever that website that you told me about, the <laughs> backdrop or whatever it's called. I don't remember. Oh, I was going to say the death clock. <laughs> you know, I missed our topic about comedy because. It's really never going to end, dude. I keep, I keep <laughs> laughing about things. I, I mean, it's not yeah. dying anytime soon. Yeah. So, I saw this video at the YouTube. Somebody had the longest, the new longest name, right? And it's like this black kid, that, it's from, and he has like, it's, I don't know, it's like 50-some letters. And somebody wrote, well, he, we know he's safe for Death Note. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, what's wrong with these people, you know? Like, where do these comments come from, honestly? This is funny. <laughs> Who's that guy? That's pretty good. All right, we're gonna end it here. Just cut that off, actually. Well, I'll try to. <laughs> I'm gonna find that video for you. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next episode. The next episode. Bum.